love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning. I guess you have your clock set and corrected now, or anybody have any difficulties? But we come to celebrate our God. We come to celebrate the light of Christ, which calls us to the Father. We come to celebrate that one instrument of his grace, his cross, which compels us to him and to ourselves. It draws each of us to evaluate, to review, to pray about, to reflect upon all of the choices that we have made that have made us the person that we are. And now we come to ask the final question. Do all of those choices take me to God? Which of those choices in my life will continue and which will not? That is up to you. That is up to you and to me. Relying upon the mercy of our God and Father, we then have the strength to always choose Christ and follow in his life. So for the times that we have not chosen Christ, let us now place ourselves before God's mercy. Let us kneel. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word you reconcile the human race to yourself in the most wonderful way, Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, your Christian people may hasten to the solemn celebrations yet to come. Through Christ our Lord. reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, sent his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths,
During all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest, with seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is not Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land, we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. For these our captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs. And our despoilers urge us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. How can we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life in Christ. By grace you have been saved. Raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you. It is a gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. 
for we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. only son so everyone who believes in him might have eternal life praise to you lord jesus christ king of endless glory my friends the lord be with you a reading from the holy gospel according to john Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we come this day, the next Sunday of Lent, to continue our journey to the light, to the light that is Christ. And that light shines on all of us. But the challenge is to allow the the light to reflect from us or through us, to allow that light to see all of the good works that we do in the name of God by the grace of Jesus Christ. And that comes to us in many, many different ways. And so I pray that as we have been journeying in this Lenten time, that you might be experiencing Christ in some new way. That's what this Lent is all about. It's not necessarily just giving up something, but it's taking on something, taking on Christ. And so he has led us through these gospels, has he not? To be tempted, remember the first Sunday? The Lord was tempted. I don't know if any of you were ever tempted. Something to think about. And then he goes to preach. He said, I now am called to preach the kingdom of God. 
not this kingdom, the kingdom of God. And so we are introduced at the same time to recognize that we live in the world, but we are not of the world. That's the life of every Christian. We live in the world, but we are not of the world. We are of the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus told us. That's what he is about. So every Christian who has the courage to bear his name as Christian must stand up and live in that kingdom and allow the light of God to shine upon him or her in all your works. And so we have to ask ourselves, is there, does everything that I do, can I place it before everyone or anyone who wants to see it? Can you place all of your deeds in front of you? Can you place all of your choices in front of you to let the light shine upon them and say, yes, because of the light of Christ, this is what I have done. By God's grace, these are the choices that I've made. Would we all have the courage to do that? Would they, put it this way, would they be, you know, light worthy? What would they reflect? That's what Lent's about, to uncover our lives, to allow the light to come from us because we are created by God. We believe that as our very beginning, we are of God in that unspeakable majesty. It's beyond our imagining. And so sometimes the culture places lots of stuff upon us. Blanket and blanket and blanket, I'll use that as an example, and gets covered up. All of those poor choices cover up the light in each of us. And so when we hear these words of John's gospel, matched with what, uh, what Mark has been calling us to, he calls us to be transfigured, doesn't he? Wasn't the Lord transfigured? He was transfigured before their eyes. We are called to be the same. Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ or not? Do you bear the name of Christ or not? Well, if you do, you must, you must place yourself before God so that you can be transfigured, so that the choices that do not take you to God might be put aside so that the choices that do take you to God might empower you to continue your transfiguration. That's what these days are all about, and we never know what, how God's grace and mercy is going to come to us. And so we need to be prepared at every moment to expect Christ. As a Christian, I expect Christ at the next moment. That changes your life completely. Changes your life completely. Gives you a different focus. And it gives you grace. It gives you grace. That's what these days are all about. To challenge you to choose grace or not. By choosing grace, we continue searching for and seeking the light. When we don't choose grace, we choose the darkness and we choose to hide from the dignity that God gives us in Jesus Christ. That story that we heard in that first reading is extraordinary, extraordinary. So I really suggest that you go home and read the passage in your own scripture. Oh, by the way, the Bibles are on their way. I have ordered Bibles. They're on their way. They're being trucked. You know how deliveries are these days. But anyway, they're being trucked. And I hope that they will be here next week so that you can see then for yourself the readings that we have on Sunday so that you can take them to yourself so that you might become stronger in his word because it's only his word that matters at the end of the day. And so his word comes to us in many different ways. 
The word came to Cyrus in that first reading. Powerful reading. Go and review it. Somebody told me I don't have to give you Bibles. I just have to direct you to Google. Well, I think the word of God still deserves a little bit more than a Google. That is the story of grace coming in extraordinary ways. We know that the Jews were in Jerusalem not listening to the prophets. Not listening to the prophets. And they were, as we heard time and time again, deed, lousy deed upon lousy deed, sin upon sin. And so what happened? The Babylonians came along and destroyed the city. Destroyed the temple. That is unbelievable in the minds of the people because we are the people of God. Their pride got in, got in the way of living the word of God. That's what happened. So the Babylonians came along and say, okay, took them all, take them, took them as captives and took them over to Babylonia and they were left with nothing. No temple, no place to worship God, no way to get back to God. So they're over here. Then all of a sudden, the geopolitical scene changed. The Persians became important. Cyrus then says, hey, if you want to be a Jew in Jerusalem, go for it. Go back home. They couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe that God would act in such a way from outside this people that would move the heart of someone to give us the freedom to go back home. Cyrus was not a Jew. He was not a Jew. And so they could not believe that this person would do this for this people. Very, very important. Now we have to remember at that particular point, the Jews believed in God, but they did not discount other gods. They believed in this God, but not exclusively. At this event, they came to know this God and this God alone. Not our God of gods, but our God exclusively. And so they came to a greater experience of themselves and of God through this extraordinary event. So they got to go home. They got to go back to Jerusalem and it reestablished themselves and rebuild the temple, which will then be destroyed in the year 70 AD. But they didn't all come home. Some of them stayed in Babylonia. They said, ah, Jerusalem's too far. There's too much work to do. I'm not going back there, are they? I'll stay here, it's much more comfortable. I'm comfortable to stay in my own choices. It's much easier to stay in the sin that I am rather than to be the freedom that I am called to be. Remember that, my friends, it's a lot more comfortable to stay in the sin that you are rather than to walk in the light that you are called to be. That's what these days are about. And so some of them stayed back there. And some of them went ahead and reestablished Jerusalem. Well, it's the same thing on these days of Lent. Some of us will stay back and say, hey, I'm not so bad. And what's the measure by which they say that? I didn't kill anybody. Well, I've also talked to murderers, murderers and they said, well, I'm not so bad. I only murdered this one person because they really needed it. Swear to God, a guy told me that in prison in Washington. Oh, is that the measure by which we measure ourselves? Yeah. <laughs> How about it? We got to lots of different measuring cups, don't we? My friends, a lot of us will stay back and say, hey, it's okay. My faith is this, my faith is that. Yeah, God is fine and I'm good and I occasionally drive by church. That's not a Christian, sorry. That's not a Christian. A, Christ, a Christian is one who's willing to stand by the word of God at the cross of Christ. That's the Christian. 
And that's what we need to discover in ourselves so that that light can shine forth from you because you had the courage to uncover you and let your choices shine forth from you because your choices are guided by and directed towards God himself. That's what these days are about. So yeah, most of us are, you know, pretty good. Haven't killed anybody lately. <laughs> so I'm gonna be just okay. And I'm just gonna go through the motions and Easter will be nice and it'll be swell. But some of us will stand up and say, I stand with Christ and by Christ in his word under his cross. That is a Christian. That is the one who has discovered God, who calls us in the most extraordinary ways and the most unexpected moments. And we receive him because we expect him to be there. Because he is there. God is as close to you as your next breath. Breathe in the spirit, walk in the light, and embrace the cross of Jesus Christ. That's Lent. So when we come to hear these words now of John, Moses lifted up the servant and, serpent and the people were healed. Jesus Christ lifts up his cross and we are redeemed. That's what's at stake. For God so loved the world that this is what he has done. What now will you do in his name? What now will you do in his name? This is what he's done for you. What now will you do for him? Together, let us profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the boundless mercies of our God, let us now open our hearts in these prayers of petition. That the church be healed of all division and grow in unity, charity, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the leaders of nations promote peace and respect the dignity of all peoples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that exiles and political refugees return home safely and enjoy liberty and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all who care for the sick, especially those near death, be a radiant sign of God's abiding love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community of faith reflect clearly the light of Jesus Christ in its prayers and outreach. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially John Wolchick, John O'Hara, Eugene and Flora Boccolini, 
Joseph R. Gronkowski, and all those whose salvation is known to God alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick, those hospitalized, the intentions in our parish intention book, and the intentions held in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, as we open our hearts before you, we trust that you will continue to strengthen and guide us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with great joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may be both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts and prepare them for reconciliation. Have even more by your spirit you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again adversaries join hands and peoples seek to meet together by the working of your power it comes about O lord that hatred is overcome by love revenge always gives way to forgiveness and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we now cry out to your majesty on earth as without end we now acclaim. Blessed is he 
You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. Jesus himself is the word that brings salvation. Jesus is the hand that you extend to sinners. Jesus is the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you because of our pride, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom, for our sake, you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation which Christ has brought about, we now entreat you, Holy Father, to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your one Holy Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we now fulfill as we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For when he was about to give his life to set us free, Jesus reclined at supper. He himself took bread into his sacred hand and giving you thanks, Jesus said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, Jesus took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who left us this pledge of his everlasting love, we now offer you, Father, what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously, Endow us with your Holy Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity, an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us always in communion with Francis our Pope, Joseph our Bishop, all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have us gathered us now at this, the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue and creed who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them this, the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in 
Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together, let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O oh God, you enlighten everyone who comes into this world. Illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless us, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.